Scale Sibley at the IAPS convention in Albuquerque and I'm with Bill Creevy. Bill, can you tell us a little bit about your thoughts about using photo reference to paint from? Yeah, great. Um, you know, yeah, that means working from photos. Uh, I've used photographs, photo references, all the time. From the beginning, you know, I, I would always work from photographs and still do, but I, I have worked plein air and from nature, I've done both. But I, I have to admit that, that the photographs are fun because, and they're really more useful in the sense that for me, they're portable and they're, you can do it wherever you are, okay? If you work a landscape and you're dependent to go out plain air, well, there's a lot to take into consideration. Oh, it's raining all day today. The forecast says it's going to be rain and rain and cloudy and foggy for the whole week. And I spent three thousand dollars to come over to Wales to paint. And now we're not going to do this. So, you know, photographs eliminate that problem. And uh, uh, and also, let's be honest, you know, unless you're a photo realist, which is what I'm not, you know, that's a whole different story. You know, taking a photograph and reproducing it precisely or making your painting look like a photo is a whole different thing, I would say, than what we normally say working from photos. You know, they use that word reference, photo reference, and that's a good word. Um, it doesn't have status, you know, when you say, oh, the photo reference to this, you know, it, it's as if there's a moral, there's a moral value in working plain air and from nature, you know, you've done the thing, that's right, you know, you, uh, this is a better thing because you looked at it. Uh, but, you know, and maybe that's true, I don't know, but um, in reality, you're after an image and, um, you know, and somehow, no matter how you get that image, is well, how you get that image is what you really are about. And, you know, and you don't have to worry about, you know, trusting in God that you've done the right thing. You know, you're up to something else. So, I've always relied on photographs. Also, secondary things like I, in my own work, I I tend to sort of go toward, for, for references, uh, I tend to go toward things that maybe aren't usually considered photo references like when I do heads and I don't want to say portraits but when I do heads and faces uh, just for themselves I, I could just as well go to a yearbook you know and get the kind of mugshot thing that they do and I like that I like that it's it's this anonymous creepy guy from high school you know and you do go all the way you know this it's sort of like the Romans would do paintings of ordinary folks, you know, and uh, so I like that. I like going to like a yearbook, uh, working from, I like to work from, from vintage uh, ads, you know, the old illustrations they would do uh, for, you know, be like they're trying to sell soap and they'd be this kitchen and they had your housewife in a dress. You know, I, I like to look at that, you know, to me that sort of uh, gives you a lot of free room to pick and choose, you know, it's not, and I don't like the work from a very, very beautiful photograph. I mean, I would never, ever imitate, you know, Ansel Adams or anything like that. I mean, that's photography, that's art of photography. I, I, I don't want to do that. What I want is to grab references and just, you know, and the, and the worse they are in a sense, they're more useful to me. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want I don't want it to be artsy from the beginning. I, w I want it to be bad. You know, a newspaper clipping, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, so, I, I use photos, but I don't use them in a serious way, not really. I mean, it's always a casual thing of flipping it around and, and for information, you know. And um, so, I feel okay about that. I don't feel that's immoral. And, um, you know, I feel good about that. And I, I wrote an article for, um, for PSA about photo references, and it was called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, no, it wasn't it. It was, a, oh, The Good, The Bad, and The Boring. 
Right. That was the point. Well, there's a conversation about how, how much more useful, boring material is. It's an interesting thing. So, the point was, those kind of things give you freedom to be yourself. You know, they're not really determining what you're doing. They're just this, because, you know, like when I did, when I do landscapes, um, they're not really landscapes in a sense. They, they're something else. And uh, I like to do structure in landscapes. I like to do, you know, the corners, the buildings, um, the highway. Uh, I'm not really a guy who likes to go out in nature much, you know, city boy. And, uh, I just like all what happens. If there's some nature involved, the time. But I do like man-made, and uh, that gives me. I'm a, little, I'm a little like Degas, you know. Degas never liked being outdoors, and um, you know, so I'm kind of like that, you know, city, urban, urban, <laughs> urban. Um, but. Um, so I, I, I like that, and I have worked outdoors in cities, and I'm not quite sure I liked it. You got to worry about, you know, a lot of hassles, a lot of hassles, and um, you know, I just don't like the hassles of working outdoors. I like the, I like the idea of being uh, more or less inside of my own head if I'm outside. But it's hard, it's hard to be invisible. It's hard to be invisible, you know. Um, when I used, when I did work outdoors, I used to try to camouflage the fact that I was outdoors. You know, I, I used to, one of my favorite things was to go out with the New York Times, fold it over a few times, sit on a bench, and put down the paper on top of the newspaper. And to anyone passing by, it looked as if I was doing a crossword puzzle. You know, oh, I'm not interested in that guy. He's just doing crossword puzzle. But if I had a French cheese a lot, well, uh, you know. So they all want to come and look, which is so I, I don't like that. I mean, I guess a lot of people do, but I don't. I, I, it's, it's a hassle. So one of the things I've been doing lately, and I won't dwell too much longer on this, uh, is um, Google. Google has Google Maps. You guys know all about that, right? Google Maps. And one of the functions of Google Maps is they have street view. And you pick, the way it works is you, you pick an address. Okay, and uh, you know, and then Google Maps will take you there, and you know, the little arrow goes down, and this is it. Okay, and then if you want to see what it really looks like, uh, you hit, you go to Street View, and then you get this kind of photograph of of this place, and Google had taken a photograph. This is not live action. This is not a podcast. This is. You know, just an old, there's a photograph to take. And sometimes they come back three or four times a year and do it, you know. So you, things change. Um, so anyway, they give you a photograph. And uh, and I, I try to work from things like that. And I found out that what happens with, with Google, with Street View, is you get the view of what you're looking for. But then you can turn this thing 360 degrees. So you can see what's around and what's going up the street, and then what's going on across the street, and then what's going on down the block. And so that's cool, you know. And you can lift it up and look down. But you get the whole 360 degree, just like you're standing there, okay? And then another thing it does is if you turn a little bit and look into the street, they give you a little mark up ahead, a little circle. That means you can go visually from where you are to that circle. So you can actually travel with this thing, okay? And you can do the neighborhood. You can go from from one building to the next and keep going, and you can just you know see the town. You can just walk around town with this little Google map, and uh, and I like that because you can go, and then that opens up the whole world. You know, you do that. And of course, don't forget you're doing what's in the comfort of your own home. You know, you can sit with a cup of coffee. You're nice and warm and cozy, and it's raining outside. Well, it might be raining in the Google Map thing, and um, but you're safe and warm and cozy. You listen to your favorite music. Nobody's bothering you, and uh, then you go down the block. You know? And the, the great thing about it is, you as long as it's a street address, you can go to the street, and you, the street could be in in Malta. You can go to Malta. You know, you say 
I don't know, just find an address in Malta and say, corner of such and such, Malta, and all will take you there. And even if it's not where you think you want to go, it's in Malta, and you can see, you see, you can see those streets on a map, and they say, oh, it's an interesting sounding name street, what's this going to be? And then you can go there, hit a button, and suddenly you're on this street in Malta, or Turkey, or Greece, or Italy. I've gone down the Appian Way with, with Street View. And what's nice about that is that if you're a landscape man, you can sort of stop along the way, flip around, and get, you know, some of the scenery. Uh, it, it's amazing how much uh, landscape you can get from Street View. Uh, I remember once I went to Sardinia, and I just picked, I, I had the map of Sardinia pop up, and I said, well, gee, what's interesting? So I, I hit the highway. And, oh man, you know, it's just cool. It was a different place. You know, it wasn't anything exotic, but it, I was totally unfamiliar with this. I didn't know what I was going to find. So it's fun to go and do that, you know? And uh, so I like it a lot, you know, and it, I have the kind of computer where if you have an image on your screen, you can capture it and then save it. So there's your photo to do the thing. And of course, when you have that, you can, do whatever you want with it, right? And I used to worry about the copyright. I said, oh God, you know, am I stealing from Google? Oh, you know, the art guards will get to me, you know. And um, but they have a little, a little thing that says you can use any one of these images for educational purposes. You know, and I said, okay, this this is okay. You know, this would be. A, I'll get through IAPS with this. They'll think it's okay. And. Um, so I, f I don't feel bad about using this. And, uh, so that's one thing I've used a lot. Yeah, I pass it on you guys, try it out. I mean, it's better than, to me, it's better than spending $4,000 going up to Maine. And when you get there, if you still have enough energy from carrying a French easel to the airport with all your stuff, you know, come on, man. You know. Um, I'm 75 and I just don't have the energy anymore to do that nonsense. You know? and, for a young person, it's cool, and if you have if you have a vehicle, a truck, that's great, you know. But I live in a city. I don't have a car. Don't have a driveway. Don't have any of that stuff. So, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. And half the time, I'm not interested in doing a landscape anyway. So, um, you know. And uh, but anyway, yes, I do use photos, and they do tend to be uh, mostly most of them are from the computer. Like I'll go back to a certain time period, like, you know, uh, pull up photographs of what, of what Santa Fe looked like in the 19th century. And there might be a little detail of, of the desert behind that. And, oh, that's it, I can use that, you know, or Mesa, or something like that. Old car ads, you know, where it's going to Highway 66, and I can say, oh man, this is great, look what's going on here. Um, so it's pretty casual. Because in the end, you know, in the end, I've learned that what really happens in art and on a painting is up here, you know, it's in your head. It, 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 this is why, you know, I mean, this is really the truth. It's, it's not what you really see so much. It's what you've seen and conceptualized that makes it, you know, and it's in your mind. So don't be, don't feel guilty if you're not standing in front of a Pueblo house. And you may not like to paint that damn thing, you know? I mean, that's what happened to me a lot when I used to paint outdoors in New York. I did a ton of that stuff. Went passed out, and, you know, sometimes I'd say, what am I standing in this building? I'm hot, I'm miserable. I'm not getting in here, it looks any good. I've wasted the whole day getting here. Um, you could make the same mistake inside and, you know, and, and pull out of it quicker. That's the thing, you know? Anyway, I, I think it's cool to use photos. As long as you don't get photographic with the bad as long as you don't try to imitate Ansel Adams or somebody, you know, but you take bad photographs or clippings from the, from the phone book, you know, anything, just some image that is not in your present context and work with it that way. Use it as a, a springboard for your imagination. So, I guess that's all I can say about that, you know. Okay. Super. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. <laughs> Thanks, Bill.